I would be curious to see what you think um, Alex Zero can bring to to this game in particular. I'm just picking one almost out of random here. Uh, Internet of Things. How, how do you see Alex Zero being a, a game changer in when it reaches its final form uh, for the Internet of Things and and all these devices? Yeah. So the the Internet of Things is a is a you know difficult topic right to discuss because what you're what you're trying to do is you have all these these different um devices sensors they're collecting data and now the question becomes are you inputting that data directly onto the blockchain right um or are you storing that in a you know maybe a, a private file server and then maybe from there storing a hash of that file onto the blockchain right so there's there's a couple of nuanced right. because uh, questions just to on interject that. there just interject there. The Internet of Things is pretty much thought out to be like a Web 2.0 thing, right? Like it, um, like you said, the Web 3.0 introduces a lot of issues with the way all these things are conceptualized. Right. Yeah. So, so, so there's so, so you have you have that. So you have this, like you say, this older design from from Web 2.0. But I don't, I don't think that that's necessarily problematic. The the bigger issue becomes how do we? I mean, in a lot of sense, the IoT requires the Oracle problem, right, to be solved. So now you have this, you know, all these sensors, all this data, and and you need to go ahead and embed it in some way, whether or not it's in a private server or it's in a you know on directly onto the blockchain. The, the issue still remains, how do you trust and verify that the data that's being reported by the sensor is still valid? So you could have hardware that is failing. So, right. So if you have like a, you know, temperature gauges um, and, and or, or, you know, humidity or whatever it happens to be, you, you still have some type of hardware malfunction that could occur. And now you need to be able to still design things in a way where you need to have re redundancy in the the number of sensors that's reporting the, the the various data. So there's there's some problems just on on the whole garbage in garbage out sort of notion where if you have data that's coming in and it's just you know invalid, then you 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 just have a lot of problems right there. So now you still need to you know have an understanding of is this data that you're receiving you know good right so so you know you need to be able to sort do some type of vetting you need to do some type of um you know clear you know cleaning out all the noise and and any potential errors and this is you know just sort of a pre-stage before you even would embed it onto the blockchain and, and then and then the other aspects would would come in from things like if you if you think of each IoT device itself as a either as a separate account or a separate identity, now you can go ahead and embed sort of your decentralized identity, you know, sort of uh, your sort of structure with each device itself. And you need to be able to have the the different standards for communicating between the different devices. Are they communicating at a you know directly you know peer to peer? Are they communicating in some way where you have a an intermediary where the blockchain is the intermediary? Are you um, uh, you know are you are you using you know what's your communication protocol just for the just just for the just the the data transfers? Um, all all of this is 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 still like you know unclear how you know how we're supposed to be going about it, and that's not even you know touching whether or not you have an a separate IoT sort of network and and sort of a sensor data that is um, you know potentially running its own consensus protocol, and in which case if it's if it's doing something like that, then you have to have full reimplementations onto the ARM. Um, architecture, right? Because most of these IoT devices aren't going to be running on uh, some type of x86-64. You're going to be on some, you know, you know, probably on ARM. And now you have to be, you know, doing all your, you know, redevelopment of of the, you know, the protocol all, you know, at that layer just so that you can run it on that hardware. I, I think it's really fascinating as well to think of where does the blockchain come in all of this? Because like you said, you probably do not need it for every single process of every single device. Um, so so you have to make design choices and trade-offs, right? And a, if you have a high-speed blockchain, like LS0, that, that does help. So th do you think that's like the, that as well as privacy is the main thing that LS0 can bring to this to this game? Yeah, I think that the the you know time to finality is is definitely important. 
um, you know, being able to reach agreement on what is the data that's being, um, you know, that is valid and some distributed system is, is, uh, is really paramount for, you know, essentially any type of, uh, of, of system, you know, in, in the, you know, moving forward. So the, and then also the privacy, definitely the privacy has to be addressed because whenever you look at what corporates are, are really interested in, they don't want to necessarily reveal, you know, transaction information, you know, data that could be proprietary to their, to their companies, you know, none of this should be revealed on a public platform. So you need to be able to address these concerns accordingly. And, and either with, uh, you know, you know, how we're, how we're looking at doing this with, with Liminal is primarily through the secure multi-party computation um, sort of aspect. But there's also and like, it's, it's, it's a tricky question because like the kind of privacy that we want to do somewhat cannibalizes the performance part because we want to do it in a purely software based way as well. So, so that's going to be definitely slower. MPCs are significantly slower than ZKPs. Um, and then when we're talking enterprise adoption on the privacy part, uh, then we still need to have a data controller. So, you know, any like GDPR and HIPAA and, and uh, all those rules still have to be adhered to. So it's, it's a very challenging um, road, I would say, ahead. Uh, and I, w I would want you to expand a little bit on this because uh, Alex Zero does use the word a lot, enterprise. So... I, I think that's a word, and I, I don't want to put a burden on you guys because this is not your fault. But I, I think that's a word that gets a bad rep because of Bitcoin Satoshi's vision and because of Craig Wright and all this. Uh, but you use it a lot, and I know that you don't use it in a centralized and in a let's use blockchain for centralization manner. So, would you mind on? laying down your definition of what you mean by enterprise in this con in the context of Aleph Zero. Mm. So, so I, I'm just going to quickly say that to, to the way we see it or the way I see it is business and institutional adoption of a public network. Yeah, so it's, so it's more about how can a an enterprise go ahead and deploy a decentralized application on a public network but then still maintain um, the necessary privacy layer that they're required to, or that they're, you know, des that their desire is for, you know, you know, as a as a company, right? So they're they're private institutions, they're private companies, and they don't want to necessarily disclose everything on a public ledger. And so now the question is, how can they um, leverage their you know, whatever application that they're trying to build by utilizing a, you know, smart contract framework, a public ecosystem, get exposure and access to this entire ecosystem, as opposed to being blocked off and, and sort of siloed in their own consortium chain. And then from there still maintain all of the, the requirements that they're looking for, either on the security side or on the privacy side. Yeah. And also, also one, maybe one more thing to add is that um this this idea came to us very much at the beginning and also that's that's you know one of the reasons we went through the the peer review process in 2019 at the at the and publishing at the acm conference um that's why we also won a trail of bits to do the audit the security audit because that hopefully shows some level of maturity of the of the heart of the network the, the consensus so um, like that that's the path we want to okay end of thought sorry <laughs> we ran out of it, language uh, uh, no worries uh, the, the, would, you, would you like to refer, rephrase that in that sense or is, is no it's fine a... i'll plug it in later on okay perfect so we have um you're very much right that you also need to allow private companies or private institutions to develop on blockchains and to release their own products. And I would even say choose which contracts they would like others to compose upon and which ones they would like to keep for themselves. Uh, then it's up to the general public to decide if they want to use or not their products, right? Uh, I would say that a DeFi protocol, for example, that obscures how some of their contracts work uh, could be a bit problematic 
but could also for some users i mean in the sense that you don't know where your coins are going or you don't know what's happening ah. exactly with them but at the same time you do gain the advantage that that, that makes them a lot harder to exploit and that makes them a lot uh, that somewhat is an incentive for innovation because then you're not going to have what happened to Uniswap that you roll out your new protocol and that same day someone just <laughs> forks it off and creates a different version, right? Um, what other use cases do you see for for these cent- yeah for, for these features that allow private companies or privately held institutions to just deploy things on the blockchain? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I guess definitely, you know, outside of the core technology, it's 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 also about providing support and actually providing expertise to to uh, to businesses looking to deploy on a new chain. So with this, we're <clears throat> we're sort of working or betting on uh, the adoption of Substrate and the entire the entire you know Ink smart contract space as well as Rust as a as a dominant language in in the blockchain space Um, well i generally saying you know use cases for enterprise use is is like saying let's build software for enterprise so it's a it's an insanely Uh vast term and we generally want to take it step by step and 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 maybe partner on partner basis basically um like maybe two years ago or two and a half years ago our assumption was let's build a superior piece of technology and uh, at the same time obviously you know looking looking for a perfect application and it was a time where for for instance uh, phantom rebranded as a as a blockchain for smart cities and our major challenge was positioning of zero either as a chain specialized in one vertical or as a general purpose platform and to be to be perfectly frank we went with the with the general purpose platform concept because you can apply this kind of technology to uh, like you know so many different verticals um and in the end it's about you know who actually chooses you or who you proactively proactively decide to build with to uh, to deploy solutions on top of the network um yeah and i i think to sort of to to add on to that, um, you know, whenever it comes to to enterprise solutions and and applications, is really more of a market driven approach. So we don't necessarily know all the fundamental details of of um, an enterprise's you know sort of internal you know um, applications that they're looking at exploring. What we can do is we can provide the support that's that's necessary to to build out their application and identify what are the key components of what is it that you want to have private? What is the sort of, the, is it this this data? Is it the transaction? Is it the value transfer? What are the, the different pieces that we can actually provide that, that would be private for you? And then from there, it's going to be more bespoke and more custom. I think also like building a general purpose thing as opposed to something that specializes in one use case. Um, it just gives you like a lot more anti-fragility, right? Like it uh, exposes you to better outcomes that you might have not foreseen. Whether <clears throat> whether if you want to be very centrally planned, very, very structured, that could play against you. Like when some unexpected event comes up. 